Um, I want to talk about the overregulation and liberating American business. Your great piece in the uh, Wall Street Journal today. Senator Angus King, an independent of Maine. Senator Roy Blunt, a Republican of Missouri, have a bill, the Regulatory Improvement Act of 2013. Can you tell us about that? Will that solve our regulatory problems? Well, we've got to start somewhere. And right now, there's nothing to stop this, the regulatory industrial complex in Washington, D.C., from grinding out more and more regulations to affect more and more businesses. Uh, you know, I, I invest in small businesses. These small businesses have a heck of a time. We have a pet products company. Dealing with the EPA and the FDA and the FTC, it's almost impossible as a big company, let alone as an emerging company. So we've got to do something about it. And one way to do something about it is to begin to force decisions on stuff that's obviously bad. And this notion of having up and down decisions, not a lot of amendments, a typical congressional special interest mumble jumble, just an ability to put things up for a vote. And uh, I was very flattered that uh, uh, the senator from Maine called me this afternoon and, and talked about it. And he's one of these guys who actually wants to shake up the Washington establishment. And I'm a Republican and he's an independent who votes with the Democrats. I just have a lot of respect for people like that, as well as for Senator Blunt, who, again, is willing to shake things up. So you think basically this thing's kind of like the um, base closing commission we had years ago. You think you can get this to work and get Congress, you know, to take votes on these proposals? Well, the beauty of this is, uh, since Congress is so beholden to special interests, this allows them, when a regulation is you know, put up by an industry as, as being bad, and the industry shows you why it makes their case, Congress now can vote up or down without a lot of pressure from a lot of special interests who want to modify it in some way, shape, or another for their personal interest. And I think that in and of itself makes for a very, very healthy process. Tom, if you look back on it, you're going to start this thing over again. Given the regulatory burdens, which continue to explode, could you start Staples? Could you make a go, a successful go of Staples? What do you think? The answer is, yeah, probably still would have succeeded, but we not, would not have gotten nearly as big, nearly as fast. And whether it's, you know, I just you know, give example after example. Uh, Staples, like many other retailers, have lots of part-time employees. Now, think of what Obamacare does to you. Mm. Uh, you'd like to work your employees as many hours as possible. Many of these part-timers are young kids, college kids who are working a job. They don't particularly care about health insurance. So now you're saying if they work more than 30 hours a week, you have to give them health insurance, which, by the way, costs roughly seven or eight thousand dollars per year, dramatically increasing the hourly cost of the employee. So what's going to happen as opposed to having 35 hour week jobs? We're now going to have 28 hour a week jobs, which is worse for the retailer and certainly worse for the student who wanted to work 35 versus 28. Regulation, time and time again, gets in the way of building businesses. Now, luckily, when I started Staples, I didn't have to deal with Obamacare. Today, I would have to, and it's not a good thing. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Tom Stenberg. We appreciate it very, very much.